This right here is a logo that will capture your attention. The detailed fish alongside the eye-catching colors that I think perfectly captures the overall feeling of this company. As suggested by that branding, Bass Pro Shops is known for their chain of almost 200 retail stores that specialize in selling apparel and equipment for fishing and other outdoor activities. Impressively, the company has grown pretty large at this point while still maintaining private ownership. According to Forbes, their estimated $8.1 billion in annual sales ranks them as the 60 first biggest private company in the entire country, employing about 40,000 people. Though right away, I do want to make it clear that their operations reach far beyond their retail stores. There's been a lot going on with Bass Pro Shops. So, given that they have been so successful in a somewhat unusual way, despite some controversies that I will touch on, I thought it would be interesting to take a closer look at Bass Pro Shops while identifying what I believe to be five of the biggest reasons behind that success. Starting off with Johnny Morris. I would be foolish to start this list in any other way because nobody else has impacted this company more than him. He is the founder, longtime CEO, and easily the person that people most associate with it. And because of that, he is currently one of the richest people in the world with a net worth of well over $8 billion. If you go into one of the stores, you will almost certainly be able to find his signature on some of the labels and a photo of him fishing with his father. It's kind of like a way to honor him because at a very young age, Johnny's father got him involved with fishing in a big way. The family lived in Springfield, Missouri, where his father operated various businesses, including some dry cleaners and liquor stores. Well, Springfield is not incredibly far from Lake of the Ozarks, widely known as one of the best places for bass fishing. By the time Johnny was in his 20s, bass fishing was becoming increasingly popular, and he started doing it professionally. Now, when you are that serious about fishing, like with most activities, you need to get some high quality advanced equipment for it. I am talking about specialized lures and tackle, but back then a lot of that stuff was tricky to find. In short, he realized that the supply for it was far lower than the demand and that presented an opportunity. To take advantage of that underserved growing market, he took out a $10,000 loan that his father had to co-sign and used that money to rent a U-Haul trailer and travel around the country in search of some of that top-notch fishing equipment. He bought a bunch of it using his fishing experience to predict what would be most attractive to the fishermen in his area, brought it back to Springfield, and sold it at the back of his dad's liquor store where he was given eight feet of shelf space. Clearly, nothing spectacular at first, but I think that's what makes it so inspirational. Starting with very little, Johnny Morris was able to take something he was passionate about and turn it into a multi-billion dollar business. I mean, that is the dream, right? That's what so many of us aspire to do, and he was one of the few people that was able to figure out how to make it happen. My next reason behind their success is specializing. Remember, it was the lack of specialized fishing gear available that motivated him to start selling it in the first place, and that is how the company grew. Once a fisherman bought a unique item at the back of that store, his friends would be curious where he got it, he would tell them, and word would spread pretty fast that way. It wasn't long before people were calling him from all over the place asking about his selection, and Johnny was able to communicate with them pretty effectively being an avid fisherman himself, so he started gaining popularity. After about three years, he started a mail order component to the business so he could more conveniently serve a greater area of customers. He did that by mailing out 10,000 copies of a 180 page catalog that featured 1,500 items, many of which were hard to find. In the beginning, he was just using part of his father's warehouse as a distribution center, but it grew into a more professional operation, eventually reaching millions of people. Today, Bass Pro Shops has expanded well beyond that catalog in many different ways, but it is still all about the outdoors. All of the stores have a major outdoor theme with wood and animals and plants and sell almost exclusively outdoor related items. It is a specialty store that truly does stand out from at least any other store that I have been to, which is actually my next reason behind their success, the way that they stand out. Entering the 1980s, with the catalogs being so successful, Johnny Morris felt that the customers would appreciate a 
location where they could physically investigate the merchandise. It can be hard to know exactly what you're getting by just looking at the photos and descriptions in a catalog. Plus, for over a decade, their only physical retail presence had been that original liquor store, so it made sense to open a large retail store in Springfield that sold a wide selection of unique outdoor merchandise. That store was appropriately named Outdoor World, but it wasn't just a retail store. That outdoor world practically evolved into an extravagant 300,000 square foot theme park for people who like the outdoors. Complete with a fishing pond, shooting ranges, an auditorium, and so many other attractions, they currently claim that it is visited by 4 million people each year, making it the most popular tourist destination in the entire state of Missouri. By the late 1990s, they had started opening more of these retail slash entertainment destinations in strategic spots around the country. I mean, people drive for hours to get to these stores, almost like a Disneyland type thing. Johnny Morris has actually been referred to as the Walt Disney of the outdoors. That is quite a title, but maybe appropriate considering that they claim that Bass Pro Shops are among the top five tourist destinations in five different states. Bass Pro Shops have also been successful through diversifying. We have already seen it to an extent in the way that it became a catalog and then a chain of retail stores, but how about boats? That seems fitting, right? They started selling fishing boats through the catalog in the 1970s, again, in a unique way. They would sell the boats in a package that also included the motor and the trailer with it. Doing that was almost unheard of at the time, so combined with the fact that they they were coming directly from the factory meant that they were selling new boats in one of the cheapest, simplest ways available. These tracker boats quickly became the best-selling fishing boat in America and still retain that title. Currently, that part of the company is called White River Marine Group and they make more boats than any other company in the world. And as of 2019, they have been involved in making off-road vehicles as well. Bass Pro Shops is also the owner of multiple resorts, including Big Cypress Lodge, a 100-room hotel located at this giant pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. The pyramid was originally built as a 20,000 seat sports arena. The Memphis Grizzlies NBA team even played there for a few years, but as of 2015, it has been leased to Bass Pro Shops and converted into yet another one of their standout tourist destinations that has been visited by more than 3 million people in its first year. But their biggest resort is Big Cedar Lodge at Table Rock Lake in Missouri, marketed as America's premier wilderness resort. They bought that that property in 1987 and built it into this 4,600 acre vacation destination that includes multiple golf courses and marinas and numerous outdoor activities. Bass Pro Shops is also involved with multiple conservation efforts, including the Johnny Morris Conservation Foundation and the Outdoor Fund, where if you buy something at their store, they'll ask if you want to round up your purchase to contribute to it. Also, there's the Wonders of Wildlife Museum. It is a giant complex near their headquarters that has over 35,000 living living fish, reptiles, amphibians, and birds. Obviously, I'm speeding through a lot of impressive places here that could easily be talked about in depth in their own videos, but for right now, I'm just trying to give a brief overview to convey how much Bass Pro Shops has diversified into these outdoor-related areas. This company has also been successful through multiple acquisitions. Throughout the years, they have grown by combining with competing companies, mostly involving their boat manufacturing. Most notably, they bought Fish Holdings in 2015, the maker of multiple fishing boat brands that you may recognize, and Hatteras Yachts in 2021. Again, helping them grow into the largest boat manufacturer in the world by volume, but their biggest acquisition was in 2017 when they bought a competing outdoors store called Cabela's for over $5 billion. I think it's amazing how Cabela's has such a remarkably similar evolution. In 1961, Dick Cabela spent $45 to buy 2,800 fishing flies, sold them in sets of five through through an ad in the newspaper and worked with his wife at their kitchen table to put them together and mail them out. That was a lot of work to make less than $100, but the real value in it was the mailing list that they started. They used it to start a catalog business selling outdoors equipment that, much like Bass Pro Shops, evolved into a chain of large destination retail locations. Cabela's became known for their impressive in-store displays featuring replica mountains with wildlife. Potentially the biggest difference is that Cabela's has had more of a focus on hunting, whereas Bass Pro Shops has emphasized fishing. But by 2017, Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops were a similar size, 82 stores compared to 95. Both of them were generating around $4 billion in sales a year, so the acquisition essentially helped Bass Pro Shops double in size. Ever since, they have maintained and 
overlapped the branding for both companies. So there you have it. Bass Pro Shops is a uniquely successful company and those are what I believe to be five of the biggest reasons behind that success. However, before I wrap up this video, I feel like I should acknowledge that this company has been controversial and most of the controversy is exactly what you would expect. They do sell a variety of firearms, one of the biggest sellers in the country as a matter of fact, which in itself is a debated issue. Maybe you remember this, in 2012 in a movie theater in Colorado there was a tragic event that I'm hesitant to even talk about right here, but it is relevant because Bass Pro Shops received a lot of negative attention from the fact that some of the weapons used in it were legally purchased at one of their stores. Also, potential discrimination when it comes to hiring employees. In 2017, without admitting guilt, they agreed to pay over $10 million to settle a lawsuit with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And finally, on a lighter note, they were also involved in a class action lawsuit where they were accused of not properly honoring a lifetime guarantee that they advertised on a sock that they were selling. Seemingly a humorous issue, but it did bring their marketing into question. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of Bass Pro Shops? I imagine if you're into fishing or other outdoor activities, this has to be one of your favorite places. I mean, what else can you ask for? Also, I'm curious about what you think of these founders. You might not approve of Johnny Morris or Dick Cabela in some aspects, but you have to admit, those are some inspirational stories. Honestly, they are some of the biggest successes in business that started from some of the smallest beginnings. I always think it's cool to hear about something like that. So any other thoughts you have about Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's or anything else I talked about in this video, including that fish logo, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.